and the number of health workers infected with the coronavirus in Nigeria keeps rising as the country battles to halt the spread of the virus. All over the world, uh, there are complaints of insufficient provision of personal protective equipment for frontline workers. And the story is not any different uh, here. Health workers in uh, both uh, public and private centers have been lamenting the lack of suits, face shields, uh, gloves, and other protective gears that would limit their chances of contracting the virus while attending to infected persons. Well, joining me via Skype is Olajumoke Ojile, a lecturer at the Lagos State University College of uh, Medicine and the lead facilitator research resource hub. Good morning, and thank you for joining us on uh, TVC Breakfast. Quickly talk to us uh, your assessment of uh, how uh, frontline workers are being protected. Uh, from global reports, uh, about 90,000 health workers uh, so far have been infected. And when you look closely in Nigeria, we see the numbers rising. How concerning is this for you? All right, good morning. <coughs> thank you so much for having me. Yes. All right, so let me quickly state exactly um, who we are referring to as health workers or frontline health workers. So for um, health workers are everybody involved in ensuring that the health system is up and running. That includes the doctor, nurses, pharmacists, dentists, cleaners, ambulance drivers. Everybody ensures that the health system is up and running at this time. And so uh, you take one person out of the equation um, it's, it's, the, the, the situation is, is a different scenario entirely. So concerning these health workers, they can also be not just at the isolation centers, they are also at the tertiary hospitals, they are the secondary facilities, they are the primary healthcare, including the private hospitals. So um, that's the spread of who these health workers are and are being plagued by the issue of shortage of PPE. So, and this is a, actually a global challenge, we agree. But despite the fact that our numbers are still about, um, you know, we are not as overwhelmed as the developed nations, we are already struggling and battling with, um, you know, the shortage of PPE in Nigeria as it is. Even at the isolation centers, we are having issues with rationing of this PPE, you know? And remember, Lagos State has also announced that they want to initiate the community, um, the, the, the community management of mild to moderate cases of COVID-19. So now we are beginning to extend the front lines beyond the isolation centers, beyond the tertiary centers, um, state and now we are moving to the PHC. So this shortage, this, this, this challenge is a huge one for the Nigerian health system to cope with at this time. Uh, beyond the shortage of the PPEs, another thing that uh, the WHO identified is uh, the aspect of pressure uh, on which uh, the, the, the workers uh, on the front lines are working where they do not have as much time to rest because of the number of patients they have to deal with. And also because of that, they may not be able to take as much care uh, as they should when uh, dealing with patients. How much... Uh, of uh, a complex situation does this also leave us with? All right, so it's, it's, it's what it is. It is a very complex situation. But what we expect at this time is that our cases are rising, health workers are now being overwhelmed across board. Remember the spectra of um, workers I identified the other time. Everybody is now being stressed off. Some people are already going into self-isolation quarantine because they are getting exposed. And so this leaves them with compassion fatigue. So at this time, um, we also the psychological, um, the psychological psychiatry departments have been inundated with responses, you know, requests for, from health workers asking for counseling services, you know, to cope with the situation at this time. So we expect that um, the support, we expect some support from either the psychiatry, the psychological department to come on board, to give this support, whether online, offline, in whatever way to, to, to speak to the mental health needs of those people, especially because it's taking a psychological toll on them. They go to work, they are afraid, they are at work, um, 
their shop, there's a shortage of PPE. You know, the environment is not as conducive for these ones. And so there's a lot going on on their mind. We are losing colleagues all over the world. And we are just thinking that, hope we don't lose someone in Nigeria because we now have not less than eight, at least to say nurses who are already in the isolation center. And thankfully, we have not lost anyone, but this is actually a stressful situation for health workers at this time in Nigeria. And um, the government still needs to do everything possible to ensure that these ones are supported, not just physically, which we're battling with, but also psychologically, which is now taking an heavier toll on these ones. Now, for every system, there are gaps, and so also the health system uh, that we see in Nigeria, especially at this time. Have we been able to identify the gaps within the system, especially with the number of persons you mentioned? It's a chain. Uh, have we identified the gaps, and also how are we dealing with this to ensure that we protect those at the front lines? All right, so, well, concerning the gaps, you're right to say that every system has gaps. And um, um, this pandemic was, has been declared for quite a while now. And we recorded our first case in Nigeria, February 28th. So what we expected the government to have done is, even if there was nothing on ground, we expected them to have swing into full action. And by now, some of these gaps, this is, this is um, two, three months, some of these gaps will have been, you know, not just assessed, identified, we would have been working towards filling this gap properly. All right, so these gaps are not things we prepare for. So we say COVID-19 is a pandemic, a battle. And sincerely, you do not prepare for a battle right in the middle of the battle. You do not prepare for it in the middle of the battle, but that's the situation we find ourselves in. But however, we expect a swifter response a quicker response from government and all the necessary stakeholders. For instance, looking at the shortage of PPE, you know, how much have we been able to, we already know that there's profiteering going on as regards PPE. So we don't know how the efforts that government is making, you know, to reduce that because some people are unnecessarily profiting from this. That's one. Two, we believe that these materials can be produced locally. They can be produced locally, and government should rise to that. They need to rise to the responsibility. We have private organizations who have risen to this you know, task already, and they are trying to produce materials. However, we need to ensure that this private, um, the Ministry of Health in Nigeria, whether at the state or national level, is collaborating closely with these ones to ensure that materials being produced meet minimum expectation. What's the use of producing a mask you know, or material that cannot pro um, protect a health worker against virus, that might just be good enough for the regular, you know, regular mm -hmm. man on the streets, you know, day to day prevent viral um, bacteria, but it mm -hmm. cannot protect you against the virus, you know. So they need to work closely with these ones to ensure that, you know, they are well funded All right. to get into that production line and also produce materials that can meet minimum expectations that okay. health workers across what can use. All right. Uh, Olajumake Ojeleya, we'll leave the conversation here now. Thank you for speaking with us.